Hello friends, in this video we are going to learn about balancing of chemical equations. This is a very general concept in chemistry and uh, it is important both for competitive exams as well as for the school exams whether it is board or internal assessment. Anyone who is in class 7 and 8 or above must understand this how to balance the equations if you want to be successful and you want to get good marks in chemistry. It is particularly important for competitive exams also. So this is a must watch video for all those who take chemistry seriously. So let's begin with the first uh, equation. Uh, before I begin with the equation, I just want to uh, brief you about how the equations are balanced. As such, there is no particular formula or any particular rule by which the balancing is done. It is just a hit and trial method. That is, we just have to uh, by hook or by crook, we have to ensure that the number of atoms of one type is equal to the number of atoms of the same type on either side of the equation. So, you will understand this better once we start with the equations. So, let us begin with the first equation that is CaCO3 plus HCl gives CaCl2 plus H2O plus CO2. Now, looking at this equation, you will uh, agree with me that uh, calcium, it's one here, one here. Whenever we balance an equation, we have to uh, just prioritize what atoms we should balance first. So, I always prefer that hydrogen and oxygen should always be balanced in the end. First, we'll balance the other atoms and in the end, we'll check out for hydrogen and oxygen. So, in this equation, other than hydrogen and oxygen, calcium is present, carbon is present and chlorine is present. So, if we check it out, one atom of calcium on the left hand side and one atom of the calcium on the right hand side. So, these two atoms are already balanced. Carbon one here, one here. So, this is also balanced. Oxygen, it's, uh, first we will check with chlorine. Chlorine one here, but there are two atoms over here. So, we will put two with HCl so that the number of atoms of chlorine becomes two over here. Now, what is left is hydrogen and oxygen. If we check with hydrogen, sorry, oxygen, there are three atoms over here. So it's two and one, three over here also. So that means oxygen is already balanced. Coming to hydrogen, we have written two over here. So that means now there are two atoms of hydrogen here and two atoms over here. So that means our first equation is balanced. So in the similar way, we are going to balance our second equation. Sodium, one atom here, one atom here, that means it is already balanced. Hydrogen, one, uh, sorry, two atoms here and it's two plus one, three atoms over here. So whenever such a situation arises in which on one side there is an even number of atoms and on the other side there is an odd number of atoms of the same type, we multiply the entire equation by 2 so that uh, the number of atoms becomes even on both the sides of the equation. So, we will just write 2 over here because we are multiplying the whole equation with 2. So, we are writing 2 in front of all the uh, components of the equation whether it is reactants or products and we will recheck it for the balancing now. 2 atoms of sodium, 2 atoms of sodium, balanced, 4 atoms of hydrogen, here it's 2 and 4, now it's 6 over here, so we'll remove this 2 so that it becomes 4 on both the sides, now it's 4 here and 2 plus 2, 4 over here also, coming to oxygen, it's 2 atoms of oxygen on the left hand side and 2 atoms on the right hand side, so our second equation is also balanced. So, we have balanced our first equation and we have balanced our second equation as well. Let us now come to the third equation. In our third equation, this is very simple. Four atoms of phosphorus. Over here, we have only two. So, we will write two over here to make it four. What is left is oxygen. Now, two atoms of oxygen over here. This side we have 5 twos are 10 atoms of oxygen. To make this 10, we have to multiply it by 5 because 5 twos are 10. 
So this balances our third equation also. While balancing, you just have to be careful that you cannot change these numbers because these are the numbers that are of the formula. Like if you are writing P2O5, it means phosphorus pentoxide. We cannot change these numbers. It is not possible that you convert this 2 to 4 or this 5 to 10. So we can just add a number before the main formula. So that is why I am using a different color of the pen so that you can easily identify where we can put the numbers and we are not supposed to fidget with the original numbers that have been given to us in the equation. That uh, Now let us start with the fourth equation. NH3 plus O2 gives N2 plus H2O. So this equation again we will be balancing hydrogen and oxygen in the end. So the other atom that is there is nitrogen. One atom here and two atoms here. What will we do? Yes. We will add a 2 over here. Now, this makes hydrogen 3 2 is a 6. So, we will add 6 over here. No, sorry, not 6. It's already 2 over here. So, we will add 3 over here. 3 2 is a 6. Coming to oxygen, it's 2 here and 3 here. The same problem which we faced in the second equation. Odd number on one side even number on one side. What will we do? We multiply the entire equation by 2. So if this is 2, it becomes 2 to the 4. Since nothing was over here, we write 2. Again, 1 multiplied with 2 is 2 and 3 to the is 6. Now we are checking it for balancing once again. 4 nitrogen, 4 nitrogen. It's a uh, 4, 3 is a 12 uh, hydrogen here and it is 6, 2 is a 12 hydrogen here. Coming to oxygen, it is 4 here and 6 over here. So, make, to make this 6, we remove this 2 and instead we make it 3. So, it becomes 3, 2 is a 6. So, our fourth equation is also balanced. Coming to the next equation that is barium chloride plus aluminium sulfate gives aluminium chloride plus barium sulfate. In such type of equations we often get scared when we see the brackets. But it is not so scary actually. It is quite simple. Whenever polyatomic ions are written in the equation like sulfate is a polyatomic ion or uh, in the next equation like nitrate is a polyatomic ion. We balance the ion as a whole. We don't have to break it into sulfur and oxygen or hydrogen or whatever the ion is. You just take it as a whole. That, that means that if 3 sulfate is written over here, so you will balance it with sulfate only. You don't have to break it further. So let's begin. Barium is 1 here and 1 over here. Aluminium 2 atoms are here. So over here it is only 1. So we write 2 over here to balance it. Now, uh, Chlorine becomes 3 to the 6. So, where it is only 2, what will we do? We make it 3 to the 6. Sulfate, 3 this side. So, we write 3 over here. So, barium is also automatically balanced. So, just check it out once again. 3 barium, 3 barium. 6 chloride, 6 chloride. 2 aluminium, 2 aluminium. And 3 sulfate. 3 sulfate. So that is how we balance a complex ionic equation. So this equation is also balanced. The next one is quite similar to this. Lead and lead already balanced. Sulfate is 3 over here. So we write 3 over here. This makes lead 3. So we add another 3 over here. Nitrate becomes 3 to the 6. Or we can look at iron also. Iron is 2. So we add 2 over here. Now let us check this equation. 3 lead, 3 lead, 6 nitrate, 2 3 is a 6 nitrate, 2 iron, 2 iron and 3 sulfate, 3 sulfate. So our equation is balanced. The next two equations are organic equations. They are also balanced in a similar way. 
just check it out. Six carbon. We put a six over here. Six hydrogen. So we make it three. Three two is a six hydrogen. What is left is oxygen. We have two here, and six two is a twelve plus three. That is fifteen. So again, we are facing the problem of odd and even. Fifteen oxygen on the right hand side and two oxygen on the left hand side. What do we do? We multiply the whole equation with two. So we get a two over here, two over here. Six two is a twelve and three two is a six. And we check it again for balancing. Six two is a twelve carbon, twelve carbon. Six two is a twelve hydrogen. Six two is a twelve hydrogen. What is left is oxygen. We have four here, and this side twelve two is a twenty four plus six. That is thirty. So thirty oxygen are there on this side, and four are there on this side. So we have to make this thirty. So we remove this two, and we make it fifteen because we know that fifteen two is a is thirty. Coming to the last equation of this video it is quite similar to this one and it will be balanced in a similar way two carbon two carbon two hydrogen two hydrogen are already there come to oxygen two atoms are this side on and on this side it's 4 plus 1 5 again a problem of odd and even odd number on this side even number here so we multiply the whole equation with Two. It becomes two, two, four, and two. Now it becomes four carbon, four carbon, four hydrogen, four hydrogen, and oxygen is four two is a eight and two ten. So to make this ten, we remove this two and we write five over here. So with this, our last equation is also balanced. So this is how we balance the chemical equations. but you must also remember that why balancing is important it is important because whenever a chemical reaction takes place it has to be in accordance with the law of conservation of mass which states that mass can neither be created nor be destroyed so the total mass of the reactants should always be equal to the total mass of the products which is possible only if the equation is balanced so i hope you have understood how to balance the equations so please don't forget to practice at home with more equations and in case you have any query you can always post it in the comment section so keep